packed last Sunday. I know I was. Amen. Let the church say amen. We're going to go into our lesson in just a moment. Uh, we did a flip and had our children's uh, corner come up a moment ago. But we want to encourage all children, please get here so you can be a part of our children's corner. The Sundays, whenever we don't have children's church. Uh, but we want to go into this word. And I wanted to come off of that song into this word instead of ministering to the children. So I appreciate you indulging me. And so we're going to be in the book of Genesis today. If you would book of Genesis chapter 30, chapter 37 right here, because it's already being funny. But help me welcome our online community, wherever they're watching, check. Ooh, this sounds different. Wherever they're watching, come on. And I would ask that you would stand for the reading of God's word. Genesis, if you can't find Genesis, okay? <laughs> Everybody, we should all be able to find Genesis, first book in the Bible, but Genesis chapter 37, and we're going to begin with verse number 18. Just uh, three verses today, a familiar passage, uh, a great passage. <laughs> Excuse me, if you've ever studied this before, uh, out the life of Joseph, you you are you know how the story ends. And the, the thing about us going through trials and tribulations is we don't know how the story ends. Uh, not Not as if we are already there in time. But we know what the word says. Oh, y'all really kind of quiet today. I said, we don't know how the story ends, but we know what the word says. Let the church say amen. And so the word tells us that already we're going to come through this thing. Even though we don't like it, we're going to come out better than we were when we went in. Let the church say amen. All right, let's get you ready. Genesis 37, I got it right? Yeah, 37. And we're going to read verses 18, 19, and 20. All right, let's read together, beginning with verse number 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Mm. Has anybody ever conspired mm -hmm, to slay you? Woo. He said, I don't know. If Maybe say, I don't know. I didn't stick around long enough to, to see if they were trying to slay me. But we're going to read verse number 19. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer come up. Tell your neighbor, you're a dreamer, and you're going to keep on moving forward. Amen. Don't worry about what you see. Don't worry about what you hear. Keep on moving forward, dreamer. Amen. I, I don't know who that was for, but you got to believe that today, that regardless as to what is happening in your life, you're going to keep on moving forward. Amen, everybody. Amen. Let's go to 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him. Mm. Cast him into some pit, and we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Remain standing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing of his holy word. We're going to speak from the subject today, take the limits off. Tell three people, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limit. I don't know what the limits are that you've allowed to be put on, but take them off. I don't know what the devil's tried to tell you that this can't happen, but take every limit off. I don't know how long it's been bothering you, but take the limits off. Let the church say amen. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place. Oh, be glorified even now. Lord, we get ourselves out of the way. We submit to you. We look unto you, the author and finisher of our faith. We take every limitation that we've set upon our situation. We take it off in the name of Jesus. We give you, Lord God, the glory and the honor. Have your way. Touch every child. Touch every adult. Touch every person in here today. Let no one leave unchanged. Oh, God, we thank you. Your word is applicable to every age and every stage. And that we would leave out of here better than we came in. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Let the church say amen. Amen again. Amen. You may be seated if you can. Take the limits off. I'm going to show you a picture and I'm going to count to three. Y'all with me? I'm going to show you a picture and I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I want you to uh, tell me what you see. All right. I especially want the kids to do this. So when I get to three, you're going to do what? 
Thank you. I got some kids who said it. So when I get the three, you're going to tell me what you see. All right. Ready? One. Are y'all here? Two and three. Okay. Now, here's how this works. Uh, it really depends on if you like dogs or cats. Seriously. Okay. So all dog lovers, raise your hand if you're a dog lover. Okay. We got some dog lovers in here. All right. Thank you for that barking. Appreciate you not doing all that barking stuff. Okay. And now cat lovers, all cat lovers, raise your hand. Okay. Some of y'all scared to be a cat lover. It's okay. Okay. As long as you don't say you love cats. <laughs> It's different to be a cat lover than a cat's lover. I'm going to leave that alone. Listen, there's another group of people I noticed that did not raise your hand. You didn't raise your hand because you're like, I don't love animals at all. Don't raise your hand right now. We already know who you are. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> the dogs, they know who you are. The cats, they know who you are. But really, this whole idea of being able to see uh, sure, has a lot to do with how you are wired has a lot to do with what you desire, has a lot to do with what you see. And there are some people who can look at your situation and they can see your situation very differently than the way you see it. You have to know and understand that, that somebody looking at your situation is seeing it one way and you may be looking at it a totally different way. You could think about how bad your situation is while someone else can think about how great it is because it's an opportunity. All right, I'm going to show you another picture, and I'm going to count to three. One, two, three, and then tell me what, what you see. Yeah, somebody's here. Come on, work with me. One, two, three, tell me what, what you see. All right, here we go. Here we go. One, two, three, tell me what you see. Say it loud. Okay, all right. I've heard all kind of things. I'm going to stop right there because some of you all deep and you need extra time to think and all that. But listen, listen, listen. This, with this, listen. this is what I see. I see that an insurance company is about to build me another house and put me in a condo and give me groceries in the condo. Why y'all looking at me like that? Y'all don't know how this works? I also see, because I heard somebody say over here, there's a car underneath the house. That means I'm also about to get a new car. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> see, some of us this morning, you have to retrain your thinking because you're looking at this the wrong way. <laughs> Are y'all here today? Let's do one more. I'm so excited. I don't know. Y'all, listen, listen. Y'all, y'all get excited with me, okay? I don't know what's going on with you today. Maybe you're too hot, too cold. I don't know. Whatever it is, just get all that under control and focus on the message. Here's the last one, okay? Here's the last one. Here we go. One, two, three. What do you see? Come on. Okay, somebody look out the window. Well, somebody got a new job. Okay. She got fired, right? She free. It was a horrible day. Yeah, let me tell you what I see. I see a lady. Y'all can stop now. I, I see a lady who escaped, who escaped witches and warlocks and demons. <laughs> and she is running for her life. She is set free. She is delivered. Oh, she can start over. She can start over. If y'all understand that, clap your hand. If you saw it like that too, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, somebody saw it like, oh, it's the worst day. Oh, what will we do with her? No, I saw this like God is getting ready to turn something around. And see, what's going on with some of us is that some of us are looking at the situation and either you're seeing it as, as half full or you're seeing it as half empty. And for those of you who see situations always as, as if it is half empty instead of half full, you are missing what God is doing in the midst of the situation. Do you look at the deficit of the situation or do you look at the increase of the situation? It all depends on what you can dream without limitations for your life. Do you take the restrictions off the situation or do you put the restrictions on your situation? Where are the unrestricted, uninhibited, set free and delivered people up in here? People who understand that I cannot be stopped. People who say, though he slay me, I will go on and see the king. People who say troubles don't last always. People who understand that this is just a sideline on the road of life. I will bless the Lord at all times. Help me give God praise if you can see what other people can't see. 
Tap your neighbor, say, do you see what I see? <laughs> if ever there was a dreamer in the Bible, it was, help me church, Joseph. Joseph is a man who really needs no introduction. Help me children, what kind of coat did Joseph have on? Help me, help me, say it. A coat of many colors. He was a young man who was sold into slavery by his jealous brothers while he dreamed one day that he would become royalty. Oh, understand this, Joseph. He wasn't dreaming a selfish dream at all. Joseph was stating that the same God who was raising him up was not putting down his brothers. And that one day he would also save his whole entire family. Yet out of anger and jealousy and the rage of their heart, his brothers sold him into a group of travelers after throwing him in a pit, took his coat, dipped it in blood and took it back, or animal's blood to his father and said that a wild beast had taken him out. And while he was in Egypt, God used him to save the entire nation of Israel because Joseph's unlimited potential to dream got him in the trouble. But understand this, your unlimited potential to dream will also get you out of trouble. There is no trouble, no situation that, listen, that the enemy can stop. Because as long as I can continue to walk by faith and see myself out of the situation, I might be still in the confines of this situation. But as far as God is concerned, I'm already out of the situation. I don't know who that was for today, but somebody has a wait and see attitude. And I told you today, I came to tell you today, cancel it, cut it off and say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, though I have much money or not, though I like my situation or not, though I like my outfit today or not, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I'm going to give God praise. Why? Because my perspective, if I can just get my mind to change about my situation, my situation doesn't even have to change as long as my mind can change. If I can get my mind out of the situation, my body will follow my mind out of the situation. If you got the thing already, somebody shout glory in here. Oh, everybody doesn't want to hear this. Everyone doesn't want to move this kind of way. Oh, look at this quickly. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Black Wall Street. All right. Thank you. That's probably most of you in this room. If not, you're in for a quick history lesson. Black Wall Street in the 1920s was a, really around 11,000 black residents who lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They had a self-contained, self-sufficient, black-owned grocery stores, banks, libraries, schools, movie theaters, hotels, and everything else you can imagine. They lined a main street with all of their businesses and houses just off the main street. It was a thriving commercial district. And as much as it could be, it was a safe space. That was Black Wall Street in 1920. This is Black Wall Street in 1921. Crowds of people obliterated the thriving Black district Nearly 100 years ago, as many as 300 people died. Why? Because the moment you start talking about doing better, because the moment you start trying to get yourself together, oh, the enemy loves to come in and try to kill your dreams. The moment you start excelling, the moment you start moving in the things of God, the moment you start growing in your career, young people, the moment you start doing better in school, you say, I'm going to get some A's and B's this time. All of a sudden, the enemy comes in to try to kill your dream. It is so much easier to quit than to die trying. Why? Because some people rather stay in their pajamas all day long eating cereal, playing video games than get themselves up and say, let me get up and do something. You'd rather sit on the dock of the bay watching the what? Time roll away. And God is not giving that to you. No, no, no. God has given you a tenacity and a spunk and he's given you a resilience to overcome. He's given you gifts and talents and abilities. He's given you the the ability to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's not worried about the status quo roadblocks or people of great affluency. God says, no, they're just bread for me. I can step over them and move them out of the way. But the moment you start doing better and saying, I'm going to build a community, I'm going to build a house, I'm going to build something for the homeless, I'm going to take a class or go back to school, I'm going to pay off some bills and save some money, I'm going to give some money to the Lord, I'm going to feed the poor, build bridges for people who need them. 
are going to build a church and a community center. All of a sudden, you know what breaks loose. But you got to be radical enough to say, ain't nobody mad. Help me. But the devil, where the people who say I cannot be stopped. Oh, they tried to stop me when I was two, three, four years old. They tried to stop me when I was a teenager. The enemy came after me as a child. And I here I am to tell the story some 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years later. I don't know who I'm talking to, but can we get some radical, tenacious people in here? People who could have stopped a long time ago, should have stopped after the divorce, should have stopped when somebody threw you out, should have stopped when they repossessed your car, should have stopped when you got kicked out the apartment, when they foreclosed on your home, should have stopped right there, but you say, no, 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 I've learned the secret, and the secret is I can do all things through Christ. Who is this word for today? Through Christ who strengthens me, and even though the enemy has been hot on my trail all my life, I come to lift up the name of the Lord and tell everybody that I cannot be stopped. Though I go through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Nudge your neighbor who needs to know this and tell him you can't be stopped. You can't be stopped. You cannot be stopped. All you got to do is remember who brought you out before and understand he will do it again. Now, y'all kind of too quiet for me. I feel like we change. Excuse me. I don't mean no disrespect, but is this a presbytery? Tyrian church. No. Is this a Catholic church right now? No. Why y'all so quiet then? This is a holy rolling kind of church. I need some people who will stand up and help me give God praise. I said I don't mean any disrespect, but when, last time I checked, we're not Episcopalian, are we? We're not quiet Methodists, are we? No, we're off the chain. Non-denominational born-again Christians in here. So you better help me. Lift up. Don't be cute today. Give God praise. I cannot be stopped. Somebody praise him in this place. Oh, you may be seated. You may be seated. That's all right. It's all right. Now look at Genesis 37 and 3. Oh, it says here in Genesis 37 and 3, basically that God favors you. Tell your neighbor, God favors you. And what we know about favor is that favor is not fair. What we should understand is that God, he has always favored you in every situation. Don't ever tiptoe into a situation thinking you do not have favor. Always expect that the outcome is that God's going to be glorified through my testimony, through this situation that I'm going through in life. Don't ever look at your bank account and wonder, God, are you still good? Young people, children, don't ever go to school and say, I just don't feel like I'm smart enough. I, I feel like I'm dumb. Something's wrong. But no, the devil is a liar. You still have God's favor. You can be in a bad situation and have God's favor. You can be on a horrible job and still have God's favor. You can live in a terrible neighborhood and still have God's favor as long as you can look past the mess that you're in and still see the blessing that Jesus is. You've got favor. Jesus loves me. We sung it a moment ago. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. If you understand you got favor, shout yes in here. Excuse me a minute. Favor when I go to the grocery store. Favor when I walk down the street. Favor as I apply for the next situation of my life. Favor in all things. You have favor. Touch your neighbor and tell them quick that you have favor. So as a dreamer, you must understand your position. Your God-given position is that even though when the enemies, the wicked ones come upon you to eat your flesh, the Bible says, they're going to always stumble and fall. You can go through whatever situation you have to go through and come out victorious. I wish Sister Milter was here for this one, but your name is what? Victorious. Are y'all with me in here? Where are the people who still have favor in here? Raise your hand. I still got favor. Thank you. God just loves me. I didn't ask him. He just loves me and I love him back. Mm, I'm going to achieve my dreams and my goals because I have favor. Oh, sometimes it feels like you're keeping your head above water. Barely, barely making a wave when you can, but you're still have God's favor all over you. I've got favor in every situation I'm in. Excuse me, I'm trying to move on. But those of you said, oh, I wish I was in a five-bedroom house. I'm in a one-bedroom efficiency. Guess what? You have favor. Those you say, I wish I had the car of cars, but I'm catching a Metro or catching a Van Gogh. Got to ride with people or Uber. God, don't, don't, don't do that to yourself. 
Guess what? You have favor. Those of you say, I wish, I wish, I wish. Oh, to cancel all your wishes. We said that a couple of weeks ago. And understand this, that you still have favor. And Joseph held on to his favor, although he was dealing something that was less favorable. But the problem, let's not hold you too long. Look at verse five. And Joseph dreamed the dream. And he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. Now, according to this passage, it sounds like Joseph's brothers didn't like him because of, of what he dreamt. He dreamed that his brothers would bow down to him and that he would save them and the rest of the family. But I want to go a step further. Uh, they didn't like him just because he had a dream. They didn't like him because he was a dreamer. Crabs in a barrel. So you have to understand that as long as you act like everybody else you know, and it's, you know everything going down, and, and you chime in with that, yeah, everything is bad, yeah, don't nobody like us, yeah, teachers all mean to us, yeah, can't get ahead, yeah, as long as you go along with that. But when you stand up and say, no, 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 I don't subscribe to what you just said. I am a child of the most high God, and I learned this morning I have favor, then all of a sudden people take issue with you. See, just like everyone else, as long as you just keep doing what everyone else is doing and keep acting like everyone else. But the moment you start talking about promotion and start seeing things beyond your situation and, you know, people would love to commiserate with you and say things like, you know, 2024, you know, with this election thing and all this happening in the world, it's just horrible, it's horrible, it's horrible. Well, they said that about 22, didn't they? And think about it. They said that about, what, 21 and 20 and, you know, COVID and just pick a year. What you got to do is understand this. Either you're going to see it as half full or half empty. You got to make a decision and the devil doesn't like you, not because of just the fact that you have a dream, but because you are a dreamer and ain't nobody mad but the devil. But watch this. Let's go deeper. Here is Joseph and look at verse five again. It's on the screen. He dreamed a dream and they hated him. Now, Joseph's 11 brothers were jealous because of Joseph's favor and dreams and purpose and provision by God. And what the Bible says next is that they hated him to the point that they wanted to kill him because the anger had progressed with them from a thought to a feeling to words and now an action. See, there are people who think evil of you. They feel evil towards you. They speak evil, then they do evil. Today, I want us to understand something that you do not have to fold and give in and throw in the towel just because there's someone that dislikes you. Understand this. People will go to great extremes to do diabolical things against you. Look at verse number 18. It says, and when they saw him afar off, it doesn't say that they conspired to, to just hurt him. It doesn't say that they conspired to take his job from him, that they conspired to ruin his, his day. They conspired to take his money. No, it says they conspired to what? To slay him. So again, there's sometimes people go from thinking to feeling to now speaking, and now they're moved into action. Are y'all here today? And it's not fair that you have to deal with somebody who's in your face, someone who's lying on you, someone who's trying to hurt you. It's because the enemy, he does not want you to move forward in your unlimited potential. You've done absolutely nothing wrong, and none of this makes sense to us. None of this suffering adds up for us. None of this pain feels fair to us. But have you ever had somebody hate you so badly that you wonder, what could I possibly do? Now, this is me. I know you've done this too. So then you try to go to the person and say, if there's anything I've done that has been offensive to you, that's been so bad that you have to treat me this way, can you please tell me what it is so I can apologize and we can move on? And when you do that, Sometimes people will take what you did and they will step on it and they will rub it all in your face and they will walk away and they'll act like, oh, they are greater than you and they won't tell you what it is because they rather hold you hostage.
attached to feelings and emotions that make you wonder and make you insecure about what I could have done to you so badly instead of getting this thing out in the open so we can forgive each other. And the worst time this has ever happened to me is when it's been with another person who's supposed to be in Christ. How you gonna hate me when we love Jesus together? I don't know who your Jesus is, but the Jesus I love loves me and I can love you. There is no situation where we should ever feel like we about to go outside and roll up our sleeves. Are y'all here today? Shout yes, amen. Have you ever heard, had somebody hurt you so badly that they didn't hit you? They didn't hit you. But because they hurt you with words and they hurt you with, with actions, that listen, they didn't hit you. But you, stay, stay with me, but you wish that they would have. Are y'all with me up in here? <laughs> because this thing hurt worse than a hit. See, to go back to when we were smaller, James, you know, Michelle, you know, we could take a, take a hit, uh, take a, a spank and they'll whip me up in here. <laughs> See, it's unpopular to talk about this today because, you know, I don't know if parents stop spanking kids. Maybe maybe some of y'all still spank. I don't know. But <laughs> some people cross the line and, you know, yeah, I got a people, couple people clapping. Don't clap your child 20. Just, just understand this. <laughs> you know, there was a time when some of us in here got spankers. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because you might not be able to lift your hand in here. Anybody have a spanking, had a spanking, and you blacked out? <laughs> you were going to be like, I'm still on the kitchen floor. <laughs> School, <laughs> the bus has already come. But no, I was the type of child that, you know, you know, just, just gearing up for the spanking. And I could count my spankers on one hand, Michelle, James, a couple hands. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, you know, I mean, I was the type of child that my dad was leading up to it. And I'm going to explain this to you. I go, uh-huh. He said, well, did, did you, you understand what you did? I said, yes. I'm, I'm anticipating. He's like, was well, this going to happen? I'm like, no, never ever again. And then he go to scratch or something. And I jump. He said, well, and I go, uh-huh. He said, I'm just like, just hit me. <laughs> just get it over with. Just spank me. I didn't like lectures. She spanked me. I certainly didn't like, you know, someone sharing in some kind of way their disappointment. But there are some times when people can do something so mean to you and diabolical to you that you wish they would have. Oh, I came to talk about the fact that there are some people out there who are dream killers. We, what we've got to do is know how to handle dream killers. There are some people out there who are dream killers and they are assassinating what God has put within you. And they do that with distractions. Does anybody remember the, the famous Marvel movie, The Black Panther? Raise your hand. You remember that? Y'all remember that? Okay, thank you. Put your hands down. What you see on the screen is the scene with uh, Michael B. Jordan's character, Killmonger, and he's uh, confronting King T'Challa. T'Challa just becomes king. That's Chadwick Boseman. And uh, he's trying to stop him from taking the throne. T'Challa had just become king. And Killamonger comes out of nowhere and says, no, I desire to be king. Now, Killamonger, he is in this guy's face. He's in the king T'Challa's face. But he really doesn't want to be president. He just, excuse me. <laughs> how y'all, how long y'all been with me? <laughs> Some of y'all don't get me still. Okay. You, <laughs> thought that was an accident. Okay. All right. Anyway, he really doesn't want to be king. <laughs> he just doesn't want T'Challa to be king. <laughs> In fact, when he became king, he was surprised that he was king all of a sudden. Y'all still ain't here. He's still ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> I cracked myself up. And, and, he, and I stopped by to tell you, do not let your enemies stop you. How they stop us, Pastor Mike? By making you think that they have the upper hand. We're going to do the motion from Black Panther. We're going to say something different. When I count to three, we're going to go like this. But we're going to say Jesus forever. One, two, three, Jesus forever. Y'all ain't here today. Clap. Give God praise. Give God praise. So y'all here. See, it's not 
over until God says it's over. And what the enemy wants you to think is that he somehow has the upper hand, but you've got to know in all things, I always have the upper hand. Are y'all here today? Remember Jesus is sitting across the disciples and one of them betrayed him in John chapter 13. And they begin to ask, Lord, is it me? Is it me? And he said, the one who dips when I dip, that's the one. And sooner, the sooner than we know it, Jesus leaned forward to Judas. And in verse 27 of John 13, he says, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. See, that's what we got to learn to do with our enemies. We got to say, you know, I don't know what you're working in the background. I don't know what you're doing. I saw you typing back there. I saw you got your phone out, but whatever it is, just hurry up and do it quickly. Why? Because I want to take what you think is the sting out of this situation and let you know that not only can I survive this, but God has already helped me overcome this. Help me give God praise if you understand that. Do not let people see your knees knock. There's a commercial for deodorant, and at the end it says, never let them see you sweat, because you have the upper hand. Can you be cool like Jesus? Jesus was not worried about Judas, and Joseph was not worried about his brothers. Oh, when he heard them talking about putting them in the pit, oh, he understood like y'all just talking crazy, because Joseph was not limited to what people thought about him or what people were going to do to him. He understood it is not over until what God says it's over. Do me a favor quickly. I'm almost done. Tell three people it's not over till God says it's over. It's not over till God says it's over. God will finish this thing. God will deliver you from this one. God will get you through the struggle. God will have you to overcome this challenge. God will get you to the other side. All you got to do is release some people. Because see, what we do sometimes is we go around collecting people. We collect this person, this person who hurt me, this person when I was eight, this person 18, this person you 38. We start collecting people. And you look up and the people say, what's going on with you? You seem heavy today. What's happening with you? It's because you have collected all the people in your life who meant to do you no wrong no good but what we got to do is shake them off in the name of jesus and let them go and understood understand that they serve the purpose are y'all with me up in here some things that seem really really bad can serve a purpose are y'all here today i'll tell rachel that uh you know years ago grandparents had these uh plants on the screened in porch and they would put eggshells in the bottom of it and um, anybody ever did that? Put eggshells. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, some kind of some kind of trick or thing they do, you know, to make the plant grow. Some kind of thing with the, decomposes, and the eggshells was would smell. You could smell the eggshells. But uh, what we were talking about, Rachel, we were talking about is, you know, God can bring something good out of what seems to be really bad. <laughs> I don't know who that was for. Somebody should have shouted or run around this room. I said, God can bring something good out of something stinky, something that seems bad, something that people don't even understand. Why are those eggshells there? That's because God is growing me up. That's because it's creating fertilizer and nutrients for my life. And I'm going to get excited because what looks strange and makes me feel uncomfortable causes you to lose your lunch or eat your lunch in your car, causes you to walk sometime and you just just walking and trying to walk it off. It's actually something God is allowing in your life to bring about something good. There's something greater than what you can see that God is doing. Consider our Lord and Savior, Jesus, and all that he suffered, all that he went through. It was to bring a salvation. What is it that God is allowing you to go through that when you get on the other side of it, you're going to say, God, I thank you. I endure this because I did not like it while I was in it. But now I'm on the other side of it. I truly understand that you've been my refuge and my strength and my very present help in time of trouble, that you'll never leave me nor forsake me. And wherever I go, you are with me. David said it like this. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, where are the people who've learned to say, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Where are you today? Stand up and be a witness of the power of God. He's all over me and keeping me alive. He's keeping me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Oh, I should have blown it. I should have thrown in the 
tile according to man a long time ago. But at midnight, it says that they prayed. And when they prayed, everyone's bands were loose. And even though it wasn't the even though it wasn't the, the job of the jailers necessarily to let them out, God said, I'm gonna do something and it even touches the jailers. I'm gonna open the prison's doors and I'm gonna start a revival in here. And the jailers might even get saved. You gotta understand that God will hold you and rock you in his bosom, that he will comfort us in the midst of the storm. Stand up and make the devil mad again because the power of God will show up in your life. Help me praise him, everybody. It's not over till God says it's over. It's not done because your enemies say it's done. It's not through because two people don't like you. It's over when God says it's over. He has the final say, so give him 10 more seconds of praise. And I'm going to teach you something before we go. 10 more seconds of praise. Oh, you may be seated. Watch this. Two things and I'm out your way. For those of you who have dreams, for those of you who are walking in an unlimited potential and something has shown up in your way and you say, what do I do to overcome this? First of all, here's what you got to do. You have to continue to speak your dream. Now, listen, find the right person to rehearse this with. with. Excuse me. I wear Invisalign. I took them out. Well, my mouth, but my mouth hurts today. <laughs> Look at verse five. And all the Invisalign people started praying for me. <laughs> You're like, touch them, Lord. And Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it to his brethren. See how I'm saying words? And they hated him yet the more. Look at verse 6. Is it on the screen? And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Now, everyone is not going to want to hear the dream that you dream. So you have to ask God to show you the right place, the right people to deposit it in. Because God wants you to carry the thing to fruition. And sometimes we stumble by telling someone too soon, the wrong person, what God has told us. When you tell them, they may not be able to handle it, especially if it's something that they want. If somebody's single and you're talking about God's going to give you a husband or a wife this year, they are not going to want to hear that. They might start comparing themselves to you. So what you have to do is make sure that I'm depositing what God has deposited in me in the right place so that the people who hear what I have to say are the people who are actually going to be happy for me. If you want to know who can you talk to, I don't care if your child is three or 30, tell it to your child. Because if your child knows that you're going to get blessed, some of y'all got this, then they start thinking about, well, if mommy's going to be blessed, and if daddy's going to be blessed, then I know I'm, I'm about to get something up in here. Let them get excited for you and with you. Let them tell you, grandma, granddad, I guess God is about to do something for you. Guess what they also will say? Children will say, you deserve it. You deserve it. You've been a good grandma, a good granddad. You deserve it. You've been a good mommy. You're a good dad. I want what's best for you. They will encourage you all. They will tell you. Tell you, you can do it. That's right, Grandma. That's right, Mama. You can do it. They will tell you, Daddy, you can do it. Tell it to the right people. Tell your neighbor, tell it to the right people. And stop talking to people on your job. Stop telling them all your business. Tell them all your trips. I, I just if, if we could just go to Hawaii, they're over there hating on you. All of a sudden, you're like, how come they, listen, the prices keep going up because they're over there praying against you. Now you better start pleading the blood. Listen, don't be telling everybody everything. Stand in the line, tell everybody thing. In the grocery store, don't tell everybody something. You ought to tell it to the Lord and tell it to the people who want what's best for you. T listen, you should be able to tell it to the people of God. You should be able to come in here and you tell us, and listen, as long as it's legal, as as long as it's timely, as long as this does not come against the scripture, we're going to touch and agree with you. That's why I'm not crazy about these unspoken requests. You can't come up on me and say, I want you to pray for something past. I say, uh-huh. And they say, I want you to pray for it. I go, yeah, tell me what it is. They say, well, it's unspoken. It's between me and the Lord. Well, guess what you need to do? Tell it to the Lord. <laughs> because as far as I am concerned, I can only touch and agree with you on what's aligned with God's 
word. I don't know if you want me to pray with you that somebody slip on the banana peel. If you don't tell me what we're praying for, I can't pray. But the moment you open your mouth and say, let's touch and agree. Let's touch and agree. I say, what is it? You say, my child needs to get saved. I can shout with you on that one. So you don't know what my, somebody might do. There are some times when you tell it to the right person, they say, well, the answer to your prayer is right here, right now. You never know who you're talking to. Help me give God praise. You ought to tell the right people your dreams. Stop being a silent dreamer and speak. Somebody say speak. Speak. Second thing quickly. What else do I do? You need to serve while you are dreaming. Now, this doesn't go over well for a lot of people because part of the problem is your dream. And in your dream, like Joseph's, we understand Joseph's situation now because we see the whole story. But I kind of see the brother's point of view just a little bit because if your dream is that people are opening car doors for you, washing and shining your car, carrying your bags, if your dream has something selfish within it, no, no, no. We have to learn how to really receive from the Lord what he sees for us as unlimited potential in the visions and dreams he gives to us and then serve while we wait. Jesus did not come into the earth to be served, he said, but the son of man came to serve. If you are a person that has to be coddled, if you are a person that has to be made to feel like you're important and you arrive on the scene, you are in trouble. When you become a person who says, oh, I just want to be a servant for the Lord. Now God can use you. If you live for the praise and the applause of people, then sometimes God says, well, that's all you're going to get. But for those of us who want something else from the Lord, and we say, God, I don't care about dwelling in the opinions and applause of people. God, I need something for my child. I need something for my life. I need something God, for you to move in this incredible kind of way. And even beyond that, oh, let me see if I can get some of you still heaven bound. Oh, do you understand that I shall wear a crown someday? That I want God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I'm not working for this lifetime and what I can accumulate down here. I don't know if God has a church for us with 30,000 members. Some of y'all don't want it either. And I can imagine it's a headache. But what I want to have happen when I get to heaven is that there's a line of people. Maybe there's a hundred, I don't know a thousand. But as long as they line up and say, I got saved. I got delivered when I was in that church. God turned something around in my life. I like that. That's enough for me. You keep the pats on the back. You keep the praise and the accolades. I'm not doing this to become a millionaire. But for those of you who understand this world is not my home. And if I can help somebody else along the way, then my living won't be in vain. You shall glory in here. You shall praise him in here. Because you understand I didn't show up to be somehow lifted up but I showed up to lift him up so that we can all get there together can I say it like this when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll shout for the victory help me praise him if you understand you may be seated do you seek to be served or do you serve because it's unto the Lord what do you do while you're waiting? This is the end. I'm closing. On your dream to manifest, you serve and you serve with love. You must be committed to your dream long enough that while you're committed to your dream, you also committed to God who gave you the dream. And you say, Lord, I'll do whatever you tell me to do while I'm working, while you're working on this situation. Now watch this. Do not put a contingency in serving that I'm doing this so that God would move me closer to my dream. 
Because what God will do, I've seen this happen, is if you think you are chasing after him and you really are chasing after stuff, God, is, is, it may be right here in front of you that you can reach the dream. And God said, now I got to move it over here away from you a little further until you really learn the secret. And the secret is you cannot come. On God. You cannot manipulate God. You cannot promote yourself and God at the same time. Whenever I meet pastors or preachers or teachers or evangelists, understand this. It could be men or women. They, they truly believe they're serving the Lord and they always lead with this whole idea of promoting themselves. I get away from them quickly because I don't know what you are capable of doing. What God told me is that Jesus did not come to be served but to serve lowly meekly he came born as a baby can't get no more lowly than that with milk rags wrapped around him in a manger Jesus didn't come with business cards and promoting himself no Jesus came lowly meekly to serve but then there came a time after he was crucified that he got up from the dead with all power in his hands he was crucified, but he was also resurrected. God raised him up. Don't think that you're going to stay down forever. Understand that this is just God allowing you to be humble by your situation. How humble are you? Are you willing to say, let me stop lifting up myself and let me lift up the Lord? We do not serve others. Because we think that God is going to somehow serve us back or we're afraid that he's going to run out of resources. And so I'm going to do this for God so he can do this for me. You have to understand this, that God's got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, ram, hogs, dogs. <laughs> Y'all ain't here today. I thought I'd break it up a little bit. That God's resources never end. He does not have to take from somebody else to bless you. That is why we should never covet. It's in the word. It's part of a commandment. But we should never covet because it proves that we do not believe and trust in God. Because we think that the only way I'm going to get blessed is when you finish with that, then I can have it. But I stopped by to tell you, you should never desire someone else's left. Leftovers. I want what God has for me. I don't want no leftovers. I want what you have straight from the throne room for me. God, I know you're going to bring it down for me. I know you're going to deliver for me. I know you're going to bring this out for me. I know that you have it for me. But while you serve, and I'm done, you're going to look a little strange. While you serve, people are going to wonder, why is it that you're serving and you're supposed to be a leader? Because what leadership really is, is service. In fact, in the Greek, the word minister, minister, minister means servant. Understand this, everyone, quickly today as I close. There are some times when we're waiting on God, but then there are other times when God is waiting on us. And what he's saying is, you could have been there a long time ago if you would take the limitations off. What limitations have you set up over your situation, which is why it's not moving where it could be going? There are times we need to plead the blood and ask God for a breakthrough because in the heavenlies, the enemy is trying to hold up our situation. And a breakthrough is when you break through the atmosphere. You break through, but the enemy is trying to stop in your life. I broke through it. I got a breakthrough in Jesus' name. But there are other times when it has nothing to do with the devil. God is saying, if I were to promote you right now, if I were to move you right now, you would not be able to handle it. So God has to get the thing ready for you, but he also get, has to get you ready for the thing because if you get there too quickly, you won't be able to handle it. So, Joseph, you got to go through the pit before you get to the palace. And Joseph did not like the palace. But what he learned in the pit, I'm done, was preparing him for the palace. I wonder what is God doing in your life that feels like the pits. 
Remember, he was thrown in a pit or a well. I wonder what it feels like it's the end. I wonder what it feels like this is horrific. If you would humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due season. Understand this, wherever it is, whatever situation you're trusting God for, if you would trust God with your back up against the wall, he will exalt you in due season. Somebody today, you've been frustrated and aggravated because it looks like you're not going to get to where you're going, but take the limits off. Like this rocket on the screen, take every limitation off and understand I cannot be stopped. Now, this is the closing point. I know y'all say sit down, but you need to do this because it's exercise in your faith when you do this. Trust me. I want those of you who understand that you've placed limits over your situation and I'm taking them off in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand up on your feet today. This is an altar call. You don't have to come. Just stand. Those of you said, if I just do this or just do that, or if I just have six weeks of this, if I could just talk to this person, if I could just get these people to help me, if I could just move in this way, if I could just have another house. No, no, no. None of those things are going to do it. What God is trying to do is God is trying to get you to the place where you simply trust in him. What he wants you to do is take every limitation off in the name of Jesus. Now think about this quickly. The enemy comes in to put limitations on your situation. That's true. But then there's another enemy called the enemy enemy. And the enemy enemy is the one that I'm worried about. I'm not worried about some slew foot, lion, conniving, fallen angel, some loose devil. I'm not worried about him running around seeking whom he may devour. The enemy that I'm concerned about is the enemy that's enemy. What are you talking about? It's when my mind needs to be renewed. It's when I stop myself. It's when I don't move in the thing that God told me that I should be moving in. That's who you ought to really be worried about. Don't we worry about some some loose devil, some fallen angel out there. No, no. Always understand this. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as long as I keep pressing and walking by faith and not by sight, who can stop me? Your enemies, help me, can't stop you. Liars, help me, come on, can't what? Stop you. People who dislike you can't stop you. People who try to destroy you, help me, come on church, can't what? Stop you. Look at somebody, you need to tell them, tell them people can't stop you. Come on, find somebody you can talk to. Liars can't stop you. People from your past can't stop you. People who hate you can't stop you. Whatever you did that got on their nerves and made them hate you, do it some more in the name name of Jesus. Keep doing what you're doing. As they say it like this, don't quit your day job. Don't stop doing what you're doing. Don't stop giving them Jesus. Love them till something comes off of them in the name of Jesus. Now help me give God 60 seconds, not 30 seconds, but 60 seconds of praise. When I think about Jesus and what it's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night. Do y'all know this? Come on then. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance. I hear a tapping. Y'all turn it up. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, go ahead. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night. Hey, here's your part. Come on. All night. 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 All night, all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. Hey, wait a minute. When I think about Jesus and what is done for me, go ahead. When I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I can dance, 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 all night. Watch this, we gon' switch. Can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name, Jesus. You go ahead. Come on. 
can't stop raising his name. I just can't stop raising his name. I just can't stop raising his name. Jesus, you go ahead. Can't stop, can't stop raising his name. I just can't stop raising his name. I just can't stop raising his name. Jesus. Break it out a little bit. Let me explain something to you. See, there are some people who are excited when they come out of a situation. They say, Pastor, I will run across this room. I will come up on the microphone if you need me. I'll preach the message this Sunday. That's fine. We understand. Why y'all get so quiet? Y'all came all the way out. Come on, keep playing something. Keep playing something. Don't go all the way out. There's some people who get so upset. And they say, well, as soon as this situation comes down, then I'm going to be all right. But then there's the rest of us who say, I don't need my situation to change. I don't need my situation to turn around. I don't need my situation to fix yet. I will bless God before it even happens. I want to say it like this and I'm done. Don't wait till the battle is over. Praise him now. Go ahead and praise him now. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, pick that beat back up. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us look like we don't know what to do right now. We came to lift up, lift up the name of Jesus. Raising his name, I just can't stop. Raising his name, I just can't stop. Raising his name, Jesus. One more time, I can't stop. Can't stop. Raising his name, I just can't stop. Raising his name, I just can't stop. Raising his name, Jesus. Hey, give God praise, everybody. Give God praise. So, Father God, we honor you. We honor you, Lord. We're praying, everybody. We honor you. We honor you. We get out of the way. We thank you, Father, for your glory that's filled this place. For the reminder that we are unstoppable, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, let your glory fill this place today. Let no one leave unchanged today. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for an unlimited favor, unlimited love, unlimited blessings, unlimited doors that you will open in 2024, unlimited situation. You turn around for our, for our glory, your glory, that we will glorify you. Help us to serve God. Help us to speak. Write again, speak, and go together. That we write the vision, make it plain. That we may run with it and speak to open up our mouth and confess it's already done. So, Father, we thank you. All glory and honor belongs to you. Lord, we thank you for your word again. And we just pray, Lord, that there's any man or woman here, young person, who needs to give their life to Jesus, that they would do it even now. If you're here today, you say today, I want to give my life to Jesus. Just step out of your seat. Walk this aisle. We'll meet you right here at this front. I'm coming because I'm giving my life to Jesus. Maybe say I'm already saved, but I'm coming to rededicate my life to Christ. We're not going to ask you why. You don't have to tell us what it is, it is or what it was. Excuse me. That's between you and the Lord. But if you are here today, you say, today I want to rededicate my life before God and witnesses. Why don't you please come? Come. Don't miss this moment. Step out of your seat. God is calling you. He's calling you. He's drawing you with his love, his love and kindness, his favor. He's saying, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you what? Rest. Rest for your soul. He said, I will no wise cast you out. Come. Don't miss this moment. 
So, Father God, we also pray for the unchurched. If there's anyone here today and you recognize today is the day that I want to join this church, this is the day I want to become a member of Redeemed. Step out of your seat. We will receive you as a member right now. Don't miss this moment to become a member of this branch of the body of Christ. Come on, if God is calling you, just put one foot in front of the other and walk the aisle for either salvation, rededication, or to become a member of this church today. I want to thank our online visitors for watching with us today. At this time, we're going to sign them off, media team.